Presidential candidates, um, the body of Christ represented here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my presentation is based on the prospect of when we will have um, an inauguration day. Knowing that I will not be able to be invited to give this speech, I am going to give it in advance. <laughs> So I would like to address you, Your Excellency, uh, and this is the congratulatory message from the church and indeed me representing the Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe and uh, the ordinary man and woman in the street. I read my congratulatory message. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Zimbabweans. <laughs> on behalf of the people of Zimbabwe, I would like to congratulate you on being inaugurated as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Your ascendance to this leadership role comes at a time when our nation needs a unifier, a servant leader, a listener, a visionary and a competent leader full of integrity in all aspects of their lives. This is the leader we want. We are tired of predators, opportunists, cruel, insensitive, greedy, and selfish leaders. Please be different. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is a land of promise and an opportunity which has which was derailed by cruel and selfish ambitions along the way. Your sir, <coughs> madam, is no easy task to take us back on track to our destiny as a nation where every Zimbabwean has equal opportunities to express their God-given potential as they pursue their individual and collective purposes. You, sir, or madam, have inherited a broken and hurting people through years of colonial tribalism, regionalism, racism, misogyny, and indeed the painful wounds we afflicted on each other through Gukura Wundi, Marambachina, and election of violence, just to mention a few. It's important to note that the majority of these wounds were state-sponsored or endorsed. From you, sir or madam, we need an apology on behalf of your predecessors and your own behalf, for we all have sinned in one way or another. The nation needs healing before we can move as one. Lead us on that path, Your Excellency. You, sir or madam, have inherited a generation where over 65% of our population is below 35 years of age, and therefore have no experience of the struggle which led to our independence, and yet have also no experience of a prosperous Zimbabwe. They have no knowledge of how a pay slip looks like and what it means to work normal hours of the day. They long for their inheritance too, we kindly urge, urge you, sir or madam, to make them actualize the inheritance of this great nation. Give them a reason to wake up in the morning and the joy of going to bed after a day pursuing their destiny with progress. Allow them to dream again without the dream turning into a nightmare. You, sir or madam, have inherited a people who are gifted, divinely endowed, Yet most have only been able to express their talents and skills outside our borders. Your say, oh madam, is to make the environment in Zimbabwe so attractive that we will not only attract them back home, but also that foreigners 
will immigrate to help us build this beautiful country for generations to come. You, sir, have inherited a nation, you, sir, and madam, have inherited a nation that has been isolated from the community of nations, rightfully or wrongly, thereby negating the nation the opportunity to benefit other nations whilst denying ourselves reciprocity of the same. Your sir, madam, is to lead us into taking our place in the community of nations. We look forward to receiving them with open hands, open hearts, as we declare open heavens to this endowed nation. Above all, you, sir or madam, have inherited a nation endowed with immense natural resources, great weather, diverse culture, and an amazing, peace-loving and beautiful people. Please don't take us for granted. This is our country too. Don't take us back to that past of our history which is very dark. We deserve better. We therefore implore you to be the president of every Zimbabwe, regardless of color, tribe, creed, race, age, political party affiliation, class or gender. Be the servant that you ought to be, say or madam. And in turn, we will honor, love and respect you. Lead the way in handing your victory with grace, treating the losers with dignity, Embracing your political force, Zimbabwe is for every Zimbabwean and not anyone's private property. Show us how you will model constitutionalism, uphold our constitution, eliminate corruption starting from the executive to the man and woman in the street, uphold human rights and freedoms and remove the scourge of entitlement and patronage. Over the months to come, we will be paying special attention to your posturing, your positioning, and your language with the hope that you will inspire us to unite in our diversities and tolerate our differences to build this so wonderful nation. In closing, I would like to quote some in the Bible that captures this poignant and prophetic moment. Psalm 126 reads, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nation, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord. As the streams in the south, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bring, bringing his sheaves with him. God bless our president and his family. May God give you divine wisdom, good health, and favor with God and man. Congratulations, Your Excellency.